my three C to Roman and this week real economy is in Frankfurt with the European Central Bank taking a look at the deflationary fear circling Europe and a reality check on if low inflation is becoming a self-fulfilling prophecy. On the show, we speak to the ECB's chief economist and executive board member, Peter Pratt, about how the central bank views deflation and what it plans to do about low inflation in its next meeting. We'll speak to experts about whether you and I should really be worried and then take that critical reality check for what it could potentially mean in deflationary Bulgaria. In an economy like the Eurozone, price swings can amplify pretty quickly. Let's use this balloon to explain. When the economy grows, gains momentum and imports more, it inflates and up to about 2%, it's quite stable. Any more and it can quickly fly out of control. When the economy stalls, prices stagnate, letting the air out of the economy and this balloon and deflating it. So let's get a quick crash course on what exactly is deflation. There once was a man called Steve who sold a lot of cupcakes in his shop. For his business, he had a large staff and bought lots of milk, eggs, flour, even computers. One day, Steve didn't sell many cupcakes, so he had a sale, but not many customers. So he had another sale, but customers kept waiting for him to drop his prices more. Not making money, Steve told his suppliers he'd wait to place an order. So his suppliers cut prices to convince him to buy. Steve decided to wait for prices to fall even more. Steve's suppliers told others, the cow feed supplier, the computer parts supplier. They were freezing purchases until prices fell as well. No one was buying or selling, so profits plunged and one by one, they all had to let their staff go. No jobs and no money meant people couldn't buy Steve's cupcakes. Everybody's business stalled, as did the economy, causing deflation. Greece, Bulgaria, Cyprus, Hungary, Slovakia, Croatia and Portugal, they're all in deflation. The rest, especially in the Eurozone, are in a state of low inflation. So how do you and I feel the implications of this on our debt, our savings, our wages? Chiara Reid jetted off to Bulgaria to ask real people that very question. Prices are very high. Some things cost less, some not. Prices are so low, so they cannot go down anymore. <laughs> Bulgaria, the European Union's poorest member state, is experiencing negative inflation for over a year. Prices, if they're not going down, they're certainly not going up. Sounds like a shopper's paradise. The problem is people are not spending, and there are more unwanted consequences. The fact that things are cheaper also means that business has less turnover, which, in turn, means less revenue for the state and eventually wage cuts and job losses. Then, even if goods are cheap, who can afford them? This happens for the first time in Bulgarian history. We have seen hyperinflation, we have seen high inflation, we have seen stable prices, but we have never seen deflation. And maybe that's why people don't react on it. It's vitally important to determine the causes of deflation and to evaluate if it's going to trigger a deflationary spiral, which would be particularly bad for heavily indebted states and households. In the most part, it is a deflation caused by the regulatory pr uh, prices of electricity, which the government has dropped. Uh, last year, and this is causing deflation throughout the, the whole economy. The owner of this corner shop has noticed that a few cents off the price tag doesn't lead customers to spending more. Moreover, distributors suggest lower prices, with the result of further shrinking revenue. Take this Coca-Cola. The new price from the factory is 1.69. And milk now comes in bigger cartons. The producers decided to give away more of the product to be competitive in the market. This is a product for which I also reduced the price to increase sales. 
but it didn't have much success, because the mentality of Bulgarians is that if it's cheap, there must be a problem, it's expired or counterfeit. All right, let's talk numbers. In April this year, inflation in the euro area came in weaker than expected and lower than last year. In the European Union, low inflation was again a very similar picture. Chief economist and executive board member of the ECB, Peter Pryor, took us on a guided tour of where those decisions will be taken on the issue in June, just before their quiet period, and then sat down with me to talk about whether you and I need to be worried at all. There is weak demand because a lot of uh, households, a lot of uh, companies, a lot of states have high debt and so they reduce their spending compared to the capacity of the production of, of the economy. So you get uh, pressure on the pricing system which are more on the downside, which is a little bit the new environment that we have. The episode we have now, the context we have now is a more structural sort of pressure on prices which is the result of slack in the economy. And so we have been taking accommodative, an accommodative monetary uh, policy. Monetary policy is the interest rates, close to zero, but also other tools uh, that we have been put in place. Can we ask what exactly are the measures that the ECB is planning to do? We have margin on rates, as you know. Interest rates are going to remain low, not only today. The long-term rates have increased in the U.S. because the situation is improving in the U.S. But we have been able, contrary to the, the past, uh, to decouple our interest rates from the U.S. That means that policy remains accommodative. More specifically, of course, there is one of the issues that we have identified very much is a transmission via the lending to uh, smaller firms in general. And so it is indeed true that we are looking at a number of uh, possibilities there. There's been a conversation about negative rates. Are we looking at a situation where credit mm. slows down even more? Is credit really too weak because of you know, the environment on which you cannot really do much about that? Or is it a specific lending uh, supply of loans from the banking sector? So we are working on that, but we have identified indeed that the lending channel is something which raises a number of questions about our transmission. Are we going to now expect low inflation for the medium to long I term? Think the biggest challenge we have today is to recreate in a public uh, positive expectations about the future. And that's not what you see today in many countries. We are looking, as I say, of some of the aspects which is basically putting financial conditions, uh, favorable financial conditions, uh, so that it, when firms decide to invest, uh, they will not have a, you know, a constraint on the credit side. <laughs> used to complaining about prices going up when we go shopping, but when we see signs say like this, up for a long time, we tend to put off our purchasing decisions, expecting these prices to come down even further. Now economists say we can't really afford to do that because we might risk a Japanese-style 20-year slump. So Gianni Maggi took a road trip to delve deeper. Europeans are learning the hard way that inflation can be bad not only when it's too high, but also when it's too low, especially if the risk of deflation forms an explosive cocktail with record unemployment rates, soaring public debt and a strong euro against the dollar. Inflation at a moderate level, 4 to 5 percent, is a sign that an economy is actually growing. You have deflation often when you don't have stable sort of long-term growth. Deflation today will remain a risk as long as we have government acting like business, too pro-cyclical. Here's the inflation trend in crisis-hit countries Spain, Ireland and Greece, and that of the European engine, Germany. The downward trend in prices stifles domestic demand and the appetite to invest. To enhance competitiveness, national economies have to act on wages. Here are the deflated unit labour costs in the same countries. Even with prices going down, the purchasing power decreases and the actual value of the debts to be paid grows proportionately. But are there other measures to counter the risk of deflation in stronger economies? According to some experts, there should be some scope for different policies. Our surveys show that the Germans, who are 
uh, historically supposedly the most inflation phobic, the most worried about inflation, scarred by the hyperinflation of the 1920s, are in fact the least worried about inflation of any of the European publics that we survey, uh, which suggests that there should be more room for uh, maneuver on monetary policy. Many economists fear a Japanese-style deflationary morass for Europe. The Asian giant is only now coming out of a 20-year period of arrested economic development. There's a lot of commonalities. One of the big issues why Japan has struggled for the last 20 years is it's one of the first countries in the world that has uh, a, both a shrinking population and a simultaneous aging population. And so when you do that, certain macroeconomic assumptions go uh, upside down. Older people want their fixed income to go farther. So incorrectly or correctly, from an older person's perspective, deflation is a good thing. To avoid this kind of scenario, then, we have to take into account not only the needs of the prevailing elderly population, but also of future generations. Do you see the, the similarities that many people point out with Japan and Europe now? I think that one of the major differences uh, with, with the Japanese uh, situation is, uh, is uh, that we are uh, absolutely addressing the uh, banking sector issue now. And uh, also in monetary policy, I think the reaction has been quite forcefully since the beginning of the crisis, which was not always the case in Japan in these years. Do you find that the mandate of the ECB sometimes holds you back from how much more you could do? No, I wouldn't say that. We went in your era uh, in a crisis with very weak crisis management uh, institutions. And in the U.S., you didn't have that, I mean, in the U.S. market. And uh, also much more flexible labor markets in the U.S. in general. Now we are starting to get out of this, but a lot of damage has been done. There is a lot of slack in the economy. So there is done, there's some price pressures. So uh, it, it, it's true that we are not in deflation. But we are in a situation of sort of slow growth, low inflation, and we are not satisfied about that. And we said very clearly that we wanted to address that and respond to that in our mandate. Mr. Pratt, thank you so very much yeah. for your time. Thank you. That's a wrap on Real Economy. We'll see you next time.